Let's talk about the Z index, also fondly known as the Z index or axis. And this is used within website design to create what you see here, overlapping images and having your images from front to back. It is the concept of depth. So you can see here, these two images we have on the left and the right, they are at the front and then that bridge is on the back. That is all achieved with the Z index. To understand the Z index, you also have to understand negative margins. This tutorial will not focus in detail on negative margins, but we're going to work with them because the only way actually to achieve this effect is you have to apply negative margins. Let's see how that works. Jump into the page builder and I'm going to add a new blank block here. And then with this one, I'm going to change the color for the background and then I will duplicate it only four because maximum six columns and I will delete this one and then I'll duplicate it once more. And this is duplicate so that we have six of them. What I'll do next is I'm going to change the color by just dragging the U slider here so we can have different colors. And then I'm going to show you quickly what the negative margins will create and how that will affect the stack order or the Z index of these columns. And that is true for all elements on this page. Another thing I have to do for it to work is I have to bring in a minimum of one spacer because currently there is nothing inside this duplicate and I'm just going to drag duplicate and make a few of them. This is just for example purposes and a little tedious and long winding, I know, but you'll get it soon. Go to the second column and now we begin playing with those negative margins. I'll go to more settings and I'll move it to around minus 30 or minus 33. Go to the fourth column, uh, settings over here, more settings, again margins, I'll move it to around minus, there, minus 33 and we do the same for the sixth column, more settings and the margins to minus around there. Good. What do you see here? You can see that this image or this column, number two, overlaps when it is bigger than the one adjacent to the left. Same here. This green one overlaps the yellow and each image on the right or column on the right overlaps the one on the left when they overlap from front to back. So your most front image or element will always appear on the right and at the bottom, and then they will have a stacking order from top to bottom going all the way down. That is the default Z index or the Z axis of images and elements within Brizzy and for other page builders for that matter. The Z index now will allow you to change this order. So what I want to achieve here is I want to take these four big squares, send them to the back and the smaller ones, bring them to the front. Now by default, these will all have a Z index of zero. And then they are arranged from left to right in a stacking order from bottom to top. To manually override this, I will apply a Z index of level one to the small ones, which will bring it one step forward. And I will leave the big ones on zero. To show you that this one is on zero, and this is where we get the Z index, go to settings, more settings and advanced. And over here you see the Z index currently at zero. You don't need to change it because you want to leave it there. Go to the small one next to it. Click on it, settings, more settings, and then advanced. And let me increase it to one. The moment I do that, you see it jumps one level forward. What Brizzy now sees is that this one has a stack level of one, which is higher than zero. This one has a level of zero, so it's in the back. And this one is zero also, but it is adjacent to the one on the left. That's why it appears higher. But I want it to be higher than this one. So I'm going to apply also a level one for that or a Z index value of one. And actually you can apply any of these values as long as it's higher than zero. And I do the same for this one, more settings, advanced, and I can just apply one again. 
And that is how you now have control over in which position in the depth of view and the perspective and the stack they appear from front to back. Right, so this is all very abstract. Let's just have a look at how you would use this practically and how do you create this kind of thing. I'm going to bring in again a blank block and what I will do in this case is add one more column then bring in an image and we can bring an image for all three of them. Let's do that. And then for this one, let's go and select an image. Do, do, do. And then for the middle one, another image. This one. And then a third image for the one on the right. Use this guy. And what I'm going to do first is I want to increase the height of this image. So I click on it and I drag the handles like this. And then to space these two, go to settings of the column and vertically center align them. Right. So by default, they come in with this space. They will not overlap. So if you are happy with this grid layout, you never ever will need to use the Z index. The moment you want to start overlapping elements, that's when the Z index comes into play. I'll click on this image and then I'll go apply negative margin. So on the margin for the right, I'll say minus 60. And then on the left, I will add 60 so that it remains the same dimensions. And then the same for this one. This time it's the opposite. So on the left, I will have minus 60. And on the right, I will add 60. So it keeps the same dimensions that we had previously. But I want this image to come in front of this one. So all I need to do is assign more settings, advance a Z index of anything higher than zero. It can be anything higher than zero that Z index goes all the way up to 100. And I hope you never have the need for 100 or even more than five. And this is how you would then typically work with the Z index. Usually you will apply that negative margins first to move containers and elements around on the page. And then to determine the stacking order from front to back, that's when the Z index comes into play. This is very popular when you are working with text for this kind of example that I have here, I actually have three text elements and then I use negative margins to move them over each other. But because this text element is the second one from the top, it should be behind this one to bring it forward. I just apply a higher Z index value. 